Welcome everyone. Today we'll be looking at the several tier lists for patch 0.4, including Rosera coming to the party, and also with the Venti rerun, and also with Child rerun. We'll be ranking characters according to the elements. We'll go through a number of resources on the Chinese Bilibili on Reddit with different tier lists, and also different builds. We'll go through the supporting characters, and solve my recommendation for some of the best supporting characters for a lot of different builds, and those supporting characters are very universal. We'll go through the build synergies and also combination with different characters and also recommendations for those characters. We'll also have a look at particular builds for Rosera and how to make her cryo team and also physical team work. After that, we'll look into some of the synergies and combinations with different elemental combinations and also what you should look for for the resonance. And finally, we'll go through some of the characters in more details of why those characters are really good with certain constellations. I know some parts you may be aware of this, and also some other parts you might not be aware of the combination of Rosera, increase in the team's critical rate, and also the physical damage. So she is a really good support, and also a sub DPS. She can also be a main DPS if you have her into higher constellations. Now before we get into a lot of tier lists and a lot of guides, keep in mind guys, play the game the way you enjoy the game, and play the characters you love. Those tier lists are here to help you to make what you already have work, to make the characters you love work. Because as we go through some of the builds, I want to focus on building the characters you love with the team that's available, instead of trying to build the meta team. And we'll go through this on the second part. So the first part, let's come over to the DPS tier list. There is also a supporting tier list, and also my recommended characters to focus on building, not too highly, maybe level 70 or level 80, those are really good. As you guys can see over here on the first DPS tier list, those characters are rated for their burst damage and also consistent damage over time. Those characters are categorized into the elements and also a little bit categorizing into their priority into damage dealing. I wouldn't say those are the correct ordering, but in general, the community do believe this is the majority way for those characters. So where I'm getting this from is from some of the resources I was searching on Chinese forums on Reddit with different tier of characters, depending on the constellations, we'll go through this, and also on the different builds. You can see some of the characters do appear more often, like Hu Tao, like Gang Yu, and also a lot of supporting characters like Xin Chu and also Sakros will come often. So we talk about those on the supporting tier list. Now coming over to the Pyo tier list, we do know that Hu Tao is a very good character. This is because she is really good in terms of her niche area. She exchanged her HP for a short duration of increased damage. She wouldn't be the best single DPS character for your team, because she has a really long downtime. But if you combine her with another DPS, maybe Ganyu, maybe Kaching, or anyone that's available, she can be really good in terms of the best pile DPS for her duration of her E spell. Now without her E spell, her overall damage is likely going to be lower than Klee and also the look. But the good thing about Hu Tao is, she does not require a really high-end weapon. Now if you come over to my Hu Tao stats, you can see that she only have 1000 attack. And surprisingly guys, my wet vessel, I did not find any more refinement. So still level 1, 3 star weapon. And this weapon is level to level 90 for the critical rate and also base attack. Her artifacts are pretty okay, and what I want to show you guys is, after casting Hu Tao's E spell, her stats goes much higher. So 1000 damage into 2900 damage, and this is her moment to shine. This is why Hu Tao is ranked very highly, it's because of her particular skill. The duration of 9 seconds is her time to shine. You play around with the 9 seconds, and then you have the 7 second downtime. This is her downside, but if you play correctly and swap into a different character, she is one of the best pile DPS in the game at the moment. And also, she does not require any high-end weapon. Even with a 3-star weapon, I was able to deal over 100,000 damage with the correct combination of supporting characters with a melt effect. Now if you have seen our previous video on Klee, I do believe Klee is a little more versatile over Hu Tao and also the look as a sub-supporting DPS. She can be building into a critical rate and giving energy for the entire team when she critical hits. And that is why I rated Klee over the look for now, because she's a little more flexible as a pile DPS. We can also have Shaolin and also even Bennett to be the DPS characters. They can work, but ideally, you do want to go with a 5 star character if you can, because it's limited resource, and we don't want to invest into a resource, then later on getting a 5 star character. So this is why you can see majority of the DPS characters want to take the most resource, and they tend to be the 5 star characters on the top of the tier list. There is one example over here with Nguang over here though. She is one of the best single target and also the Geo character for the DPS. She's also a 4 star. So coming over to the Hydra section. 
I'm sure most of us know that Child is really good, even with Constitution 0, he can do a lot of damage. And especially with the Hydra dungeons and the equipment for him, he does really well. And commonly guys, Shinchu is rated one of the best characters for supporting and also for damage. And he is quite cheap to be found. So you can see over here on the tier list, Shinchu is quite high over here. And also on a lot of other tier lists, you can see Shinchu on the top and in a lot of teams. Notice that Shinchu is almost everywhere. So this is why I really do like Shinchu. And if you don't have someone like Child, and if you don't plan to build Mana into a DPS, Shinchu can be very powerful. Now coming to Cryo. Now most of us do know that Gang is incredibly powerful as a charge attack dealer with her Cryo damage. She is also really good with her wide radius of AoE ultimate and also the taunt with her e-smell. So Ganyu is one of the top tier characters in most of the tier list. You can see her over here, you can see her over here, and you know, in a lot of the builds you can see Ganyu. She can be even a support because she increases the cryo damage of the team after casting her burst ultimate. And after Ganyu, I do believe Chunyang and also Kaya can still be a cryo DPS. But you know, Rosaria is coming and we want to give her some respect. So why is Rosaria good is not only she deals cryo damage, she can also deal physical damage. The downside with most of the Quayo team is that if the enemy is a Quayo slime or if the enemy is a Quayo abusive mage, then you can't deal damage to them. So Rosaria being able to deal physical damage and also giving the team more critical chances is really good because, you know, just don't use Quayo damage. You deal some physical damage or switch into a different character and gain the increased critical rate. Now, Electro characters are very interesting. One of the viewers pointed out there hasn't been any new Electro characters in the game since the launch of the game. So guess what's going to happen guys? When we go to Inazuma, likely we're going to have the Electro Archon, likely we're going to have a lot of Electro characters introduced to the game. So very excited for that. But in the meantime, Kachin is the only 5 star Electro character. And you know, she has been getting a small nerf because of the, you know, the latest patch hotfix. But other than that, Kachin is still top notch. Her charge attacks are not bad, and also there is the 5 star weapon for her with a Jade Sword. Other than the Kachin, Razor is a physical Electro DPS, Bidu can be a supporting shield DPS, and also Fessel is one of the best supporting character until she gets to Constitution 6. Once Fessel gets to Constitution 6, the character becomes an incredibly DPS machine with Electro damage. She attacks really fast with the bow, and her bird ults will strike the character down. She can also be a really good support. So Fessel is definitely one of the top notch characters we'll talk about over here. So on some of the really good characters to look into to invest. Now for the Nemo DPS, we know the Yakshasha Shell is going to be the strongest Nemo character. He is built solely as a selfish DPS, so he is really good at what he does. He's going to exchange HP for damage, but he does require a lot of support. But if you're looking for a DPS that doesn't need elemental synergies, that's just great if you have the 5 star weapon and decent artifacts, Xiao is definitely your man. We can also build the Animal Swirl Effect Venti into a DPS, with attack percentage, critical rate, critical chance, and also some elemental mastery. He can be incredibly powerful because he will enable your second DPS to be powerful as well. So if you cast Venti's Burst Ultimate, your other characters can create the Swirl Effect into a Fire Tornado, into an Electro Tornado. So you can really adjust your venti depending on the other characters you have. And finally, Sakura's can do something similar to venti, but she is a little weaker in terms of the damage potential by herself. She enabled the whole team to be the DPS. So that's why we have Sakura's as the, you know, a really good character to invest with Animo characters, because she make your team strong. Her elemental mastery is one of the best. Now finally, we have the Geo characters. Unlike the other DPS characters, the Geo characters, the two of the four stars are considered some of the best DPS characters. Nagon is really good for her single target damage, and once you get her to one constellation, her normal attack now deals AoE damage. So this takes care of her lack of area effect. She is really good when you sing out enemies and also you know shooting your bullets through the Jade Scream and also casting her ultimate to deal multiple instances of damage. Now if we're going for AoE DPS, Noelle with Constitution 6 is one of the best Geo AoE DPS. She swims for about 10,000 or even 20,000 with the crits. She works wonderfully well with the latest Geo buffs into Geo minus resistance, into more damage, and also into the shielding team. So she works really well with Zone Lee for the buffs and also the shield. She works well with our battle for hitting everybody else. 
and we can use the five star geo characters as dps as well our battle and zoli can do a lot but usually those two characters are built in a special way as a supporting character and our battle is pretty much your turn you build your e spell and then you trigger the e spell with other characters you don't trigger the e spell that much with our battle by himself so those two are definitely some of the best supporting characters and that's why you can see zoli over here now before we're coming over to the supporting tier list, we can see that a lot of those characters will vary depending on the constellations. Here we're going to assume the 5 star characters do not have a very high constellation, usually constellation 0. So the 4 star characters are also not maxed with constellation 6. If they're constellation 6, some of the 4 star characters can easily take over some of the 0 constellation characters with 5 star. And this is when we come over to this post by Zimin Well over here, who translates Unisys's particular tier list. The Chinese content creator usually make a really informative tier list with a lot of little themes, a lot of different marks. You can see the elements, you can see the special effect of the character, what, what weapon they recommended with Ammo's Bow or Homer. You can see the constellation for the characters. You can also see a lot of different signs and a lot of different tips. So notice that he is ranking character depending on constellation zero. This is quite important. I often see tier lists ranking characters just to constellation 6. We don't really get characters to constellation 6, do we? So if you're looking for something that is more versatile, come over here and have a look at the characters that also work with constellation 0. And this also goes along with our tier list because we're looking at constellation 0 and maybe constellation you know, 3 or 4 with the 4 stars. Now, some of the characters are special because characters like Noel, characters like Fessel are really good with constellation 6. So you will still see those characters over here. Similarly, if you've seen our previous video, the Klee burst damage is massively higher with Constitution 4. So there are some specialties, and we're going to focus on some of the special characters like Chongyang with Constitution 2. His Constitution 2 reduced the team's cooldown, and this means you can cast more spells. And he is the only character in the game that provides cooldown reduction. And this is why he's so good with attack speed boost and also cooldown reduction. He also can deal a lot of damage. Now coming over to a supporting tier list. Notice guys, right away, it's a reverse of the DPS tier list. The 4 stars are coming ahead. And you do see some 5 stars like Venti and also the Geo Daddy, you know, the Zhongli over here. So notice that it's like a reverse over here. The characters that's behind over here are coming to the front. Usually you want to have 1 to 2 DPS characters and 1 to 2 supporting characters. You can have multiple supporting characters for a character like Xiao. Because, you know, he's a selfish DPS. He wants everyone around him. And you want some really good resonance for him. But usually, two of the supporting characters is great. One is going for maybe the resonance, one is going for your team synergies. Maybe elemental combustions with elemental combos, vaporize, you know, melt, or you can go for additional damage, cooldown reduction, or maybe attack speed. Now I'm sure you guys know most of the top supporting characters over here, and you probably tried some of them. So I won't go into them for too many details, and what I want to focus is, if you're going for physical character, like with Rosaria, you can go with Xin Yan. She actually increases your physical damage, and she works well with Rosaria to provide her with a shield. She's also a pile character, which allows you to debuff enemy with pile and go for melt with the quiet characters. Other than that, Rosaria is of course our focus. Her abilities do go stronger, and she can backstab enemies, she can deal physical damage, and her increase of critical rate is essential. Because if you're running her as a supporting character, you want to get her as high critical rate as you can. And this is why we can come over to Rosaria with other quiet characters. So over here, I made a small party setup for Rosaria. If we're going Rosaria as a supporting and a sub DPS, we can use Razor as the main DPS for now. There will be other physical dealing characters in the future that is, you know, that is quite powerful as a 5 star. But for now, Razor is one of the best physical characters. He is also an electric character. So Razor plus Rosera is really good already. We can have two Quiet characters for the Resonance for additional critical chance. And this will allow Rosera to give the team higher critical chance. Having her passive unlocked, Rosera can give the team 15% of her current critical chance. So the higher her critical chance is, the higher the team gets. Chongyang is also great for attack speed, which Razor and Rosario enjoys. Zoli is a really good support, but if you don't have Zoli, consider someone like Xin Yan. She can also work with additional physical damage. So this is quite a standard physical team. If you're going for the 4 stars, Xin Yan can definitely come in. If you feel yourself short of energy particles, have Fessel in, and this way you can have additional electro resonance for additional particles for Razor to cast his burst spell. 
And finally, if you do have Ganyu over Trion, that's not bad as well, because you have additional way of range attack and also increased cryo damage. So give it a take, this can be a really good comp for Razoria. Depending on the 5 stars or the 4 stars we have, she can be very powerful. Now coming over to a third tier list. I know guys, there's a lot of tier lists, but I really want to be a comprehensive guide for you guys, and I do feel like having a lot of characters stack over here is a little overwhelming. So those are about the 7 characters I want to focus on. Those characters does not have to be level 80, level 90. They can be level 70. I'll give you guys an example. My zone D is currently leveled higher because I had the resource. But notice my Venti is not even level 80, it's level 79. So supporting characters does not have to be very high level. Their spells and their effectives do come handy because of their passives and also their skills. But of course, if you get characters the higher level, they do deal more damage. So, you know, that's a plus. So coming over to the characters. I'm sure most of us know Burnett and why he's good. He heals, he increases the damage of the team, he's also a pyro character. So if you look at the resonance for the characters, something I want to highlight. They are really popular resonance for the two pyro characters and also the choir characters. One for the increase of the critical rate, one for the increase of the damage percentage. 25% attack is actually really good for the characters, especially those with a higher base attack. Now when building the characters, we also want to be aware of the elemental reactions. So if you're going with Burnett, there's a lot of good pyro interactions. Currently, it is the only one that goes with Dendro. So later on when we have Dendro, we might have more effects with Dendro. So only enemies have Dendro right now. You can be debuffed with Dendro if the particular little Helitron Mage casts on you, but that's not a lot. So what you want to focus on with synergies is going to be Melt, Vaporize. After that, if you're going for physical damage, you want Superconduct. Melt and Vaporize deals the most damage because they're multipliers. They can have 150% or 200% additional damage. And Superconduct lowers the enemy's resistance to physical damage by a lot. So, you know, 50%, that's no joke, guys. So those three are the ones we want to focus on, and they're the most powerful ones. But after that, you can go with a Swirl effect if you're going for any more characters, especially with Sarkros, which she can give you a lot of bonus damage from the Elemental Masteries. There is a popular saying in the Chinese community, the DPS characters will come and go. There will always be new DPS characters that's coming, but the supporting characters were here to stay, because they are universal, they can work on a lot of teams. And whenever a new DPS character comes, it's the supporting characters that make them shine the most. Now because those 7 characters do have the unique strengths and also specialties, what I want to do is, I want to spend maybe 30 seconds on each of the characters. We have talked about Burnett a little bit, what I want to focus on Burnett is, Keep in mind guys, the increased damage from Burnett is about his base attack. So the base attack of the weapon plus his, you know, his natural leveling will provide the highest base attack. If you want higher healing, build him with high HP percentage. So if you get attack percentage artifact, those does not work for his bonus damage from his burst ultimate. Now coming over to Shinchu as a support. For him, it is actually really good because both of his E spell and also burst spell do stay on the next character. He can provide a bit of healing, damage reduction, and also a lot of Hydro damage if you build him correctly. He doesn't have to be the highest damage dealing characters, I feel that getting some energy gain is really good. He does have some really decent Hydro damage just because of his passive. After that, Shinchu's particular burst damage allows you to deal Hydro damage, which works with Vaporize. So a lot of characters can work well with Shinchu, the Quiro characters for the Freeze, the other characters for the Vaporize with the Pyro characters. So this is why you see Shinchu often gets built with Hu Tao. So if you come back over here, you can see Hu Tao and Shinchu, Hu Tao and Shinchu, and then you get to see Shinchu with some of the Quiro characters. So Shinchu is quite popular with the 4 star and also 5 star characters, because he consistently debuff enemies with Hydro damage. And that's why people love to build him. The positive thing about him is, his Ring of Sword also triggers more often the quicker you attack. So the faster your attack speed is, the more damage you can deal. Now coming over to Diana as a support. She is really amazing and often underrated because there's a rapid and also a hold phase with her e-spell. You can have the particular sacrificial bow and then you want to go with always holding because you can reset your holding spell. After that, her burst spell heals you and also provides with a lot of good effects. 
If you come over to Attendance and Passives, you can see that his shield gives you movement speed and also stamina consumption decrease. For someone that's going for charge attack, if you have Constitution Zero with Hu Tao, or if you're going for someone like, you know, a lot of charge attacks, a lot of dashes, this can be really good. And also, enemy gets a damage reduction when they come into her burst spell. So, having the 10% damage reduction is not bad. We can also see that the higher level you get Diana with, you also get more utility spells. So even with Constitution Zero Diana, you can be really good because you get a Cryo Resonance for the critical rate increase, you get a Cryo Synergies with a proccing of her E spell and also Burst spell, which does Cryo damage. Now coming over to Chilion, he is one of my favorite characters in the game. The downside is his E spell will debuff your characters, especially Electro characters, into Cryo damage. You really don't want that. So the, this is the only downside. But if he's going with a Cryo team like, you know, Rosaria, they don't mind dealing Cryo damage. And similarly, Chunyang can do a lot of burst damage if he use his burst spell, especially with Constitution 6 Chunyang with additional burst spell, additional damage. Now usually, most of us don't have the higher Constitution Chunyang. So what you want to do is, you want to stay in Chunyang's circle for the 8% increase attack speed. And the biggest focus for him is the 15% cooldown reaction. So if you're in his circle, casting any of your E spells and also Burst Ultimate, you have the 15% cooldown reduction. Combined with, with the Nemo effect, you get a lot of more cooldown reduction. And this means more spells and more damage. For someone like Xiao, someone like Hu Tao, this can reduce their downtime, increase their attack speed, and also their damage output. Now I'm sure most of us know about Fessel, so I won't go into her into too many details. Her odds does stay on the field. The bigger focus is that having her Constitution 6 with Vessel, she will be able to have longer duration of Vessel, and also the bird will attack the enemy with Vessel's base attack as electric attack. So you can consistently debuff enemy with electric damage. What I'm thinking is, with Inner Zuma to come, we might see some buffs with electro damage. So when that happens, Vessel may become one of the best damage dealing support. She doesn't heal us, but she can do a lot more damage. Now coming over to Sockers. I'm sure most of you have heard of Sakura's, but basically, she is the best elemental mastery support with a really low cost. She gives the team 50 elemental mastery, then she gives the team more elemental mastery depending on her elemental mastery. So usually you can get Sakura's to about 200 or even 400 elemental mastery. I've seen someone getting her over 700. So 20% of that can be about 50, can be about 100. So this can be really good. After that, even getting Sakura's to one constellation means you have one additional charges, and this means you can cast the 15 second cooldown spell twice. Sakura's is also a mini Vinti. She can drag enemy in together, and she can be the unique throw effect. If we have her to high constellations, she can also increase the team member's damage by 20% for the elemental damage of her burst ultimate with absorption of the particular element. So she is one of the best elemental supporting support for the elemental compositions like the Melt Effect and also Vaporize. And finally, for my top 7 supports, we have Zhong Li. After the Geo buff guys, he is one of the best characters in the game. So if we come over to his E spell, which was buffed multiple times in the patches together, look how long it is, it keep going. And the Jade Shield reduced enemy's resistance to the elemental and also physical by 20%. This particular shield that is provided by holding, for me, is a lot of shield. So not only he tanks for your team, he also reduces enemy's defense. And also, it triggers geo damage, which can be really good if you're going for a geo team. With two geo resonance, now the characters have increased shield strength, increased damage deal, and also reduced the enemy's geo resistance by 20%. So the geo characters are definitely on the rise. If you're considering him as a DPS, he can deal about 100,000, 200,000 with his burst spell. He also petrifies enemies for about 4 seconds. So yeah, Zonli is quite powerful. And you know, additional shield, additional increase of percentage damage, so the higher HP he has, the stronger he gets. Now I wouldn't say Zonli needs any constellations. You can get 2 pillars, but that doesn't feel too strong for me. And constellation 6 Zonli means, you know, you can't die, but come on guys. <laughs> it's not dying with constellation 0 for me. And just to show you guys my Zonli, where, where did he go? I leveled him up just to give him higher base HP. So I'm looking at about 44, 45,000 HP. And this means when we go to her particular talent with his E spell, notice I'm still level 8, but I'm getting a lot of defensive potentials. 20% of that is about 9,000 HP. And that means, you know, I'm not dying. None of my characters are dying because the particular Geo Shield is very protective. 
AT is about 150% more absorption to damage, so it's 9000 times 1.5, which is about 13,000 HP, and this happens quite often, so Zoni is one of the best supporting characters in the game. Now before you finish the video, I do want to share some of my insights of building teams and also parties. This is more of a recommendation, but what you want to do is, have a look if you need damage. If you need damage, someone like Burnett is straightforward for damage. Someone like the Nemo characters can provide damage because you trigger the Swirl effect with the Vedamensen set. The full Vedamensen set increases your Swirl effect with elemental damage. After that, are you looking for synergies? Are you looking for combinations of Electro? Are you looking for Vaporize? If you're looking for Melt, Shinchu, Diana, characters that provide the Cryo, Hydro, or Pyro damage can be really good. So you can see the characters over here, and depending what I need on the team, I'll pick some of those supporting characters. If I'm going with Hu Tao, I want someone with a shield, might be Diana, or maybe Shinchu, or maybe Zhongli for the premium support. If I want additional pyro character, maybe I can go with Bennett, maybe I can go with Shaolin. And finally, do I need a cooldown reduction? Do I need faster movement speed? Do I want to go quicker with Venti? Or do I want pure additional damage like someone like Mona? She increases a lot of damage. By casting Mona's Burst spell, you can increase a lot of the damage enemy takes, and she can be a really good taunt with her E spell. So there's a lot of varieties for building characters, and it's up to us to go for different builds and different synergies. So let me know what you guys think about this tier list. I try to cover everything with a bit of research from the English community and also from the Chinese community. And also, I try to give you a variation of the tier list and different characters. We did go into Rosera a little more details, because she will be the new characters in patch 1.4. So let me know what you guys think about building for Rosera and how she can be really powerful with physical and also choir damage. Now if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips and news and event updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with Catherine and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.